legacy. It means preserving our history. It means honoring our families who came before us. It means celebrating our culture. Legacy for me is really important. It's how you'll be remembered. HBCUs in general haven't really gotten the respect that I think it really deserves. What HBCUs mean to the community, the development and growth of young people, that sense of being a part of something bigger than yourself is something that HBCUs really bring to the forefront. Basketball for me, it's art, it's poetry. It's like a freeing feeling when you get on the court and you're playing ball, you just kind of live in the moment. I figured as soon as I had an opportunity to put on a classic and give young talent the space to play on a big stage, I thought it was really important. Can't you see I've got you the eyes of a champion? To play on national stage is tremendous. It's the type of exposure that we need to show everybody what we can do. HBC basketball isn't really talked about enough. It's not really recognized enough. And we have a lot of great talent. Being able to play on a big platform like that is something that people only dream of. So I'm really excited about it. I think of HBCU as a whole right now, it's bringing a lot of attention in today's climate. It's very inspiring how outspoken they've been, how strong they've been. I think the HBCUs are finally getting its just due. This is my legacy. You can't The Prudential Center, known affectionately as The Rock, will be rocking tonight. It's an HBCU doubleheader. The Invesco QQQ Legacy Classic is about to go down. You know, once upon a time, the best college basketball was HBCU basketball, and now the focus is returned. The North Carolina Central Eagles rolling into Newark to take on the Delaware State Hornets. It's game one of our basketball doubleheader, and boy, will it be great. And inside, well... The bands are ready, the players are ready, we are ready to bring it all to you. The Hampton Pirates band in the house, same for North Carolina Central's band. You know, as a kid who grew up on an HBCU campus and has lived through HBCU basketball, this is my dream job and my dream day. Kevin Frazier here, joined by Quentin Richardson, Renee Montgomery, and the founder and creator, the man who made this day happen, ah. the one and only Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> Michael, we have a lot to talk about. Hold on one second because right, I, I want to let everybody know, you know, changes has hit the sports world with COVID causing cancellations and postponements in the NBA, the NHL, and college basketball. We are no different. The Hampton Pirates, because of COVID protocol, couldn't be here today. Next man up, the Delaware State Hornets are here, and they will take on North Carolina Central. Michael. This is fabulous. The atmosphere already popping. Yeah. Why put this together? I mean, at the time is now. I mean, honestly, growing up, my, my little brother went to HBCU. All my friends and family went to HBCUs. And I felt like they needed this platform, a nationally televised game. Like you said, this is their Christmas right now. Yeah. They don't get an opportunity to play at this stage, to be seen the way they need to be seen. Yes. So I wanted to bring it back to my hometown in North New Jersey, where we give the young people an example of what could happen if you keep following your dreams and you keep working hard. Heck yeah, Renee, this atmosphere is amazing. It's crazy, it? it turns up in here, and I was talking to you about it. Some of these teams may never get a national game on TV, so when we talk about this is their Christmas, they get to get seen, they get to put their talents on display, so yep. I'm excited, I'm turned up, I'm ready for the dunk contest, let's get it. Let's yeah. go. Q, these are two basketball teams that are on the rise. North Carolina Central, of course, won the MEAC last year, but they're also improving. Yeah, I love it. I mean, I think this is a chance for them to show on this national stage and this national showcase what improvements they're trying to make and the strides they're trying to make to become a good program. So this is the best place to do it. And we are getting started. But I want to let everybody know that this weekend is about more than just basketball here at the Q -Q Invesco QQQ Legacy Classic. This week, Invesco hosted an eSports competition along with educational workshops, a keynote panel, and booths at the Career Summit in their support of HBCU students and student athletes on and off the court. And listen, Michael, everybody can't be a basketball star, but it's important that opportunity is granted because 20% of black college graduates in this country come from HBCU. Exactly. That's why we wanted to have the career fair. You know, the career summit yesterday, and we had the college fair today. 
So we can start bringing in that new talent. Like you said, everybody's not going to go to the NBA. Everybody doesn't have a future yeah. in sports. But with the businesses, the executives, the different positions of power that are in the, in the industry and around the game of basketball, I think are extremely important. So we have everybody here to start ushering these new talent into these fields that they didn't even know were possible. And by the way, this isn't a one and done. No. This is an annual Come event. On, yeah. It's the first one, but yeah. we, 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 we're nowhere near from being over with. Hey, count me in or cut it out on all of them. My <laughs> man, I got you. <laughs> Somebody, you, you went to UConn, but you still yeah. understand the value of these HBCU colleges. Um, why is it important also that we have this job fair and we promote the folks who won't be basketball players? Because it's that, it's that 2%, you know, like mm -hmm. everyone talks about going pro, but we know the reality of yes. that 2% right. actually goes pro. So even college athletes may not go pro. So yes. they need to go to that job fair as well and figure out life after sports. And then just we have to be our own community. Exactly. We have to build it up. We have to help somebody. We got to recruit. We need Howard. OK, yes. yep. go yeah. to Howard. Yeah. We need to tell people well. HBCU might be for you. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And, and as someone who has two rings, you should know. And you know what? <laughs> oh, oh, but um, humble brag. Speaking of basketball, um, real quick, you know, Michael, you're an actor. Yep. But you're also a basketball player. I hope. 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 Five years ago. Look at the club guys. Hey, hey. I don't and like that he's going against the Chicago team, but I'm just saying a little bit here and there. You know what I'm nah, saying? man, hey, I haven't, haven't hooped in a while, man. We got to get back out there. I miss, I miss playing ball. I really do. You know I what see. our lives yeah. start to grow? We start playing, you know, career. You don't have as much time to play Facts. ball like you want to, but I miss it. Yeah, you're in the middle of promoting a movie right now. You're on the road. I am. Man. Journal for Jordan, y'all. Make sure you check it out. Yeah. Don't want to forget okay. that. Hey, I'm, I want to let everybody know it's a doubleheader today. Two big and great games today. HBCU's best playing basketball here in the Prudential Center. We kick things off with North Carolina Central. As I mentioned, they're the defending conference champ. They take on Delaware State. In between the Bleacher Report slam dunk contest presented by HBO Max. And then our nightcap, North Carolina A&T versus Howard Aggies and Bison. For all those folks out in Hollywood, all those Howard hey. folks out, they're always yakking. <laughs> I want to see you. I want to hear from you today because your team will be in the building. That's right. Michael, this is fantastic what Thank you've done, man. man. Cannot tell you how much uh, I and all folks that have been attended or been to an HBCU appreciate what you're doing. Man, thank you so much. And this is my rally cry for everybody in the community, man. It's starting to step up. Like, yes. I just don't talk about it. I want to walk it. I want to lead by example. And hopefully we get other people that want to be involved with this and be a part of the movement. Love it. You hear that? Be a part of the movement. There I'm all in. I'm Are all you in. Right. 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 Do you still have eligibility? Because you was ready to go back and play, right? JR, JR went JR back. JR went back. We'll be right, right back with much more. We're getting ready for basketball here on TNT. Uh, the Legacy Classic is about to kick off in just moments. That's great. What legacy means to me is how you want to be remembered and what mark you want to leave on this earth. A uh, legacy means to me just the impact you have on people's lives while you're here and after you've gone. It is important to leave a legacy behind for the next generation. All right, here we go. Miller in motion. What, wait, is that a baby on the field? It looks like it, Craig. And the defensive linemen are playing peekaboo. I've never seen anything like that before. Harris now appears to be burping the baby. Uh, that's a great moment right there. Ref going to the rule book here. Well, wait a minute. Harris is off to the races. We don't need any more trick plays. Touchdown! But we could all use more ways to save. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that's got to be a long bus ride home for the defense. Switch the Geico for more ways to save. Time to fly. If you want the truth, Neo, you're going to have to follow me. I had dreams that weren't just dreams. And just like that.
right, everybody, stand up straight. Okay, now let me flip it. Oh, Welcome back to the Invesco QQQ Legacy Classic. All right, let's send it down to today's public address announcer, Mr. Mark Fratto. Here at Prudential Center. At this time, we ask that you please rise, remove your caps, and join our partners at Pandora in welcoming the Virginia State University Gospel Chorale as they perform Lift Every Voice and Sing and the United States National Anthem. Virginia State University Gospel Corral. You know. <laughs> that was simply spectacular. The Virginia State University Gospel Choir coming up on the other side. It's basketball time. Grant Hill, Stephanie Reddy, Taylor Rooks, and J.R. Smith will have the call. It's North Carolina Central and Delaware State. to New 
Newark, New Jersey. It's a mild day for December. The Prudential Center is the host for our treat for you this afternoon right here on TNT. Welcome to the Invesco QQQ Legacy Classic. We have a double header. North Carolina Central University Eagles will be taking on the Delaware State University Hornets for our first game as we welcome you inside the Prudential Center. I'm Stephanie Reddy. Glad you all are with us this afternoon. I've got my partner in crime, Grant Hill, for the entire day and a very special guest analyst, NBA champion and student at North Carolina A&T State University, J.R. Smith. J.R., we're thrilled you're here with us. You are from Newark. You are obviously a basketball fan. What does this day mean to you? Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. I appreciate this you know, opportunity. Um, this is a great time. This is a great time for HBCUs. It's a great time to see uh, A&T get a dub. Cannot wait, and uh, he alluded to it. A&T will be playing in our second game, Grant. So for the first game, what are you looking forward to seeing? Well, two teams here in Central Delaware State have gone through some adversity early in the year, but looking to find themselves before they get in the conference play on this stage here today should be a good battle. Cannot wait. It's time now for today's starting lineups presented by Cricket Wireless. As we look at the starting five for each team, Grant, who do you like? Well, guys, I like Randy Miller for Central. His experience can score. And Miles Carter, he's got a little J.R. Smith in him. Can shoot it, get to the rim, does a lot of things out there for his ball club. I love it. That's quite a setup as the gentlemen are getting ready to tip the basketball. Our officials for the afternoon for this first game, we've got Haywood Bostic, Harold E. Harris Jr., and William Humes calling the game for us. First possession goes to the Eagles of North Carolina Central University. That's Eric Boone starting things off offensively. We know he can get things going, Grant. He really can. Right now, Delaware State in a zone, and they try to use their length inside. The big fella alters so many shots with his length and great timing blocking shots. But that zone you'll see a lot of to try to keep Delaware State out of foul trouble. And no surprise that Delaware State immediately went inside to try to attack the big shot blocker, maybe try to get him out of the game early. We see uh, Delaware State starting their offense, trying to also go inside. That was out on DeMarco Balcom for the Hornets. He will also inbound the ball. And, and Balcom's been a real good player. Very efficient, shoots threes, strong body, likes to post as well. So he's getting the starting opportunity with the injuries right now for the Hornets. And Balcom not inbounding the ball. They changed it up at the last second. North Carolina Central very excited. Here are the head coach for the North Carolina Central University Eagles, Lavelle Moten. Yeah, Lavelle Moten has had a storied career, was a great basketball player as well at North Carolina Central. And his teams, they always compete, they defend, they play hard, and he uses his bench. Expect 10, 11 guys to play here today for the Eagles. Yes, when Lavelle was a player, 80 and 28 in his three seasons, Grant. He could play, he could shoot that thing too. I know you remember, I heard a little story, a little pickup action back in Durham. Yeah, back in the day. <laughs> Bucket good for Delaware State. And for the Delaware State University Hornets, Head coach Stan Waterman, this is his first season at Delaware State. First season and just had, has had a storied career as a coach in high school. 30 seasons coaching at Sanford High School in Delaware. 10 state championships. So trying to build and establish a culture here in this first season. Quite a resume. Another bucket. That is Randy Miller Jr. for the North Carolina Central University Eagles. Knocks down the three ball. We got a shooter here bringing the ball up, Grant, for Delaware State. Dom Fergala. Fergala, he's from around the way, Northern Virginia, certainly an experienced guy. Shoots it a little bit like JR. Doesn't get as high on the lift, but he's got a nice jump shot. Miles Carter misses Central the shooting the ball well. Yeah, they are. They are. And, and that's something they haven't done well this year, JR. Uh, but they've come out shooting the ball well. As you said, right on cue, Randy Miller in the corner. That was more my range in the NBA. I didn't have JR's range. I was a corner three-point shooter at the end of my career. But Central, a lot of new faces on this ball club. And Lavelle Moten trying to figure out what he has. Can they mesh? Can they build that chemistry, that continuity with this ball club? 
defensively, sometimes when you have new faces, the defense could be ahead of the yeah. offense. But here earlier, JR talked about offense on fire. Hey, JR, can you imagine having 12 new players on the team in the same year? I mean, how would you even go about trying to run an offense? Uh, I mean, at that point, you just really got to get the you know, throw the ball up and practice and see what you got with the guys. Uh, you'll find out who's got the motor and who doesn't, and then you just play through them. Uh, when you got 12 new guys, it's just, it's really tough to find chemistry right off the bat. I can't even imagine what that's like. Uh, Coach is really earning his keep this season. <laughs> <laughs> Turnover. Delaware State has the ball. Marco Balcom inbounding it to Fergala. And right now, you know, obviously injuries have hit the Hornets this year. And they've had Corey Perkins, who's been a, a, a really dynamic point guard as a freshman for the Hornets. And uh, he's out right now and not playing here this, this afternoon. So uh, handling the ball pressure, the full court press that Central has is going to be a struggle for Delaware State here early, as you've seen. It will be. Coach Waterman got the job in the summer. And in fact, Corey Perkins was the only athlete he was able to sign in time before the season. Had some history there playing uh, for him in the high school, Corey Perkins, but he will be missed. They go inside to Sodom. They call a travel turn. Delaware State. JR, your thoughts on that? That's a big boy right there. <laughs> yes, he is. Push, that's a tall dude right there, man. The guy, you know, he's great on defense, offensively, just a little bit, not strong enough. And, and certainly, yeah. you know, doesn't have great balance inside, but he can block shots they are at the rim. Although, you know, all this stuff, you got to go verticality anyway, so it's, uh, it's probably better for him. It's true. It's true, that's a good point. This kid right here, number four, he, he's a small guy for Gala, but he can flat out shoot the ball. Had 31 points this season already in the game. Hit five threes in that game, so he's more than capable of catching fire. Nice up fake. Yeah. Excellent play by Miles Carter. Jam, you like that? I like that acrobat. Acrobat. Delaware State now back in the zone. And they packed the zone in. I mean, that three point shot is going to be there all the day. Man, yeah, they shoot it. Yeah, but that, but that's going to come out of that zone. But well, that's the thing, we talked yesterday with Coach Waterman. He said they, they pack it in there, mm -hmm. and they're really trying to keep guys out of foul trouble. They don't want to get into that bench. Inside to Sato, he kicks it back out. Trying to reset it, Miles Carter. Turnover. Eric Boone with the ball, starting the transition. Kicks it out to... Uh, there it is! That's his third, isn't it? Yes, it is. Man. Somebody better find him. He is cooking right now. He might yeah, be the, playing with a lot of energy. JR, he might be the zone buster you were talking about. For sure. They're gonna have to come out of that zone. He keeps shooting the ball like that. And without getting nothing on the inside, you gotta you gotta come outside and play. Forgot my answers. Grant, you said he was a shooter. Yeah, young man can, can really shoot it and he has a quick trigger. And, and obviously. His three-point shooting is so important here. Delaware State trying to stay in this game early and not let Central get too far out ahead. But they need to find Miller because he has found the sweet spots against this zone. They found them this time. Miller attacks. Oh, double good. Yes, double oh, wow. And right now, it's been Miller time. Automatic from three. Central in control. to the Legacy Classic. I am Taylor Rooks. Both teams that you're watching on the court today are dealing with some adjustments. North Carolina Central was actually scheduled to face off against Hampton, but after a number of positive COVID tests, at the 11th hour, Delaware State had to step into the game because North Carolina Central could no longer play. So both teams have only had about 24 hours to prepare for each other. Hornets didn't even arrive in New Jersey until this morning, but everyone has rose to the occasion. Stan Waterman watched film all night, said the message that his team was simple. Focus on what we can do, what we can control, our defensive system, run our offense, and just focus on your teammates. Stephanie? 
Taylor, thank you so much. Excellent reporting. I mean, this was a last second call, literally, for Delaware State. But as we're showing you, the Hampton University band is here. Their cheer squad is here representing. So that's awesome that we have that contribution. In. And I will say this. Uh, I know that coach was up late watching film last night. <laughs> yes, he was. Both coaches right, right. were up late yes, watching good film. Point. Good point. Offensive rebound. Putback is no good. Baba again bringing the ball up. Remember, he is the shooting specialist asked to do more today in the absence of Corey Perkins. Malcolm with the attempt. No good. North Carolina Central is off and running. Justin Wright can't get it to fall, but gets his own rebound and gets the foul. You know what's interesting, though, about these two teams getting the late notice that are playing? It's not even like the Central team has a ton of experience playing Delaware State. Only one member of this team played Delaware State last season. So, well, and, start. and that's the reality in college sports right now, particularly in basketball, with the transfer portal, a lot of new faces. So, early in the season, teams, excuse me, coaching staff are trying to get to learn each other, figure out what they have, build that chemistry. It's, for Dollar missed a wide open three there, but games like this on this stage give them an opportunity, particularly before they get into conference play, to build that cohesion necessary for success. Miles Carter pulls up. No good, out of bounds. And, and, and it's incredible. I mean, Taylor talked about in that little segment how, you know, Delaware State. You know, they're thinking they're just hanging out. We saw the SID right. just before the game. He, he had plans to spend time with his wife this weekend. Our apologies. They get the call yesterday. They drive up today and pull up, you know, at 11 o'clock before the game. So just the fact that they uh, are here and competing. Look, it's indicative of the year. You just got to adapt and adjust and go with it. The last, that's what they've done. Last couple of years. Yeah, that's right? true. That's true. Whoever can thrive through adversity comes out the victor. Fergal at the top. And, and, and that's not really Fergal's game right there. He's not a guy that gets his shot off the bounce. He needs someone to help create for him. And, and that's where Perkins, who's been so good as a, as a young freshman point guard, four, over four assists a game, uh, him not being able to play really hurts this team. Ronald Lucas in for Delaware State. He just inbounded the ball, forgot at the top of the key with it. He fouls Carter. That's your guy, Miles Carter. Yeah, a lot of awareness on Carter for Central. They do not want to get him going. And we'll jump ball inside. It's a little testy in there, but we like that aggressive play for both teams. Let's see what happened here, Grant. Yeah, just going for the ball. Ball gets on the floor. You want to get after it. Nothing there. Nothing there, you know. It's a little chirping. Nothing yeah, wrong with yeah. that. I don't even know if they were chirping. They were just, you know. Look at J.R. J.R. Smith's like, what? Well, that was nothing. Just posing. <laughs> <laughs> posing, I like it. Oh, J.R. Fergal with the ball. He has limitless range. The shot clock violation. I'm asking you, Jr., because we know Grant didn't have limitless range. Oh, you were a little man. closer to that. What is that? How does that open up the offense for your teammates when you can shoot like that? Jr., I'm sorry to cut you off. Your microphone is down. We cannot hear your response. But, so but Stephanie, like, wait, wait, wait. We're gonna work on that, Jr., and get but back the shade. to you. What? I mean, what shade? I mean, I could shoot a little bit. I didn't have JR's range, but you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, you do what you do, you know? I mean, not everybody, you know. I, there was no shade there. I was just reiterating <laughs> no, just what you yourself said. <laughs> You're right. You're right. The Invesco QQQ Legacy Classic is presented by Invesco QQQ, proud to support HBCU students and student-athletes on and off the court.
and by GEICO. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. At the free throw line for North Carolina Central University, we've got Nicholas Fennell. 6'4", senior. Redshirt senior. Yeah, once again, I mean, Lavelle Moulton rotating a lot of bodies, a little press here. You see likes to do this right here. Got it. From watching the UCLA, John, John Wooden at 2-2-1, two, two, full court press, and just trying to be disruptive, changing up the defenses and creating turnovers. Once again, the Hornets missing there at the basket. Man, they did a great job of dissecting where the defense was playing. They got it inside, but no go. Going the other way, stop a play here. And it's interesting, we talked about the Hornets and their defense. They do such a great job of, of defending without fouling. They commit just 14 fouls per game against their opponents. And the, their opponents go to the free throw line at the fourth lowest rate in the nation. Wow. So, but their opponents uh -huh. shoot a lot of threes against them. That's the flip side of, of that right there. Well, that's a problem. Randy Miller Jr. Officially, we can just say he caught fire. I mean, we're not even halfway through the first half. I mean, and he, and he shoots a 29% from the three-point line. But he's coming here on fire. And great work inside. Let's take a look at this three again, Grant. Yeah, I mean, same spot. I mean, we had that earlier right there. And Central doing a good job of moving the ball, penetrating the zone into the gaps, forcing two to guard one. And you leave a shooter wide open. And the guy, you know, I know as Miller hit that shot, I saw JR like, okay, yeah. Like, you know, shooters respect right. shooters. Yeah. So, JR, sorry about the technical difficulties. Let's get back to your thoughts oh, on no being way. a shooter with range and how that helps your team's offense. Yeah, I mean, just it just transcends the offense. Spacing the floor gives the guys, uh, guys like LeBron and Kyrie a lot of uh, range to attack downhill and, you know, get out the way. So uh, when you can play against teams like San Antonio who like to put one foot in the paint and then play everything from the, on a closeout, it uh, makes it a lot harder for the defense to, you know, keep you honest. Excellent. Grant, did you get that? <laughs> I'm learning. It's never too late to learn. It's never too late. We'll be back with more Battle of the Bands all day long. Back inside the Prudential Center, you can see the score there. Central up by nine. It's time now to throw it down to our graduate correspondent, Ashton Edmonds. Thank you, Stephanie. I really appreciate it. Although Hampton University's Pirates basketball team couldn't be here today, the world-renowned marching force is here in the building. This band has performed in Italy in the New Year's Day celebration at former President Barack Obama's inaugural parade, and tonight they will be at Barclays Center performing during halftime at the Brooklyn Nets game. Steph, this band is here to stay. This band is here to show up and show out, keeping the HBCU legacy alive. I love Back to it. you. Thank you, Ashton Edmonds. I love it. Ashton's a graduate of Clark Atlanta University, showing up and showing out he did. And Grant, we've got some Warner Media interns here working along this crew with Ashton. We've got Victoria, who's the field producer, Camille in audio, Jonathan in lighting, and Malcolm, camera operator. Yeah, incredible. Incredible to bring all these young, talented individuals in here, get a chance to work in broadcasting. I'm going to say, after Ashton, just that little report he did i'm a little worried about my job hey you thought you ought to wally be. Pip, he might you know he might get you. yeah man hey <laughs> and by the way he's dressed appropriately he, so that he is that he is and plus i've heard you like to excuse yourself sometimes during the broadcast so ashton's ready yeah, sometimes i'm getting a little older sometimes i gotta use the restroom <laughs> and speaking of hbcu showing up and showing out take a look at our production crew look at this long list I mean, this is unbelievable. Yeah. I Senior mean, Vice President, Creative Director, Watkins, Drew Watkins, in charge of this whole thing. Great job, Drew. I mean, it's incredible to give these young men and women an opportunity to see how a broadcast is professionally done. Warner Media, TNT family. I mean, excited that we're doing this and having the chance to showcase these talented players and teams. But to give those young men and women yes. an opportunity is fantastic. It is terrific. Ronald Lucas with the bucket. And I gotta just throw this out there. 
I did go to Coppin State University. Hey, okay. Okay, right. so the Eagles are also representing in the broadcast today. Okay, all right. <laughs> You were a good player there, too. You, you know. I was okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got to at least embarrass a little, man. Do the assist. I know you did. You lobbed it up for me. Sorry about that. And, and I like that last possession there for, for the Hornets. Get out in transition before Central's defense can get set up. It's so hard going against the pressure of that half-court defense from North Carolina Central. But getting out in transition, and of course, this man right here, Carter, is so athletic, so explosive, and loves to, to, to finish at the rim in the open court. Let's tell, tell his story, by the way, Grant. Miles Carter, he came to the team as a walk-on as a freshman. Okay, he continued to develop his game, earned second team all MEAC, and this year chosen preseason first team all MEAC. He's second in the MEAC with 15 points per game. I mean, you're giving me inspiration right now. So here's the thing, here's the thing. So I can't play ball no more. I have no more eligibility. But I'm playing golf. So maybe JR can hook me up. Oh, I see where you're going. There's a walk-on on the golf team. Yeah. You know JR, what I'm saying? Can they even do that? Uh, you're talking to a walk-on. Uh, yes. That's right. Okay, there we go. Well there we go. JR well done. JR did it. I, I didn't know you. Okay. A okay. student athlete at North Carolina A&T State University, a member of the golf team. His school will be on tap after this game. Well, you know his, you know his, his new nickname. I don't. What is it? 4.0. Oh, yes. <laughs> Nailed it. 4.0. Let's talk about that. JR Smith, congratulations on that. 4.0 your first semester. I mean, that's amazing. I appreciate it. It was so much hard work going into it. Um, you know, just not understanding about, you know, so much things, so many things about going to school and having been discouraged for so long. Uh, it's an it's a unbelievable achievement for myself to actually receive that and work as hard as I did to get to that point. That's incredible. 4.0, first semester. And that's sweet. Oh, man. Come on, man. Hey, that, hey. Man, I've been playing golf with Ray a lot, so I've been, I've been, uh, I've been having a good uh, teacher. So he's been, he's been helping me a lot with my swing. So right now, uh, he still got me, but right now I've been wa watching him. Uh, he's been really helping my swing get, get good. Well, I'll tell you what, I've been playing a lot, and I got a golf, golf coach too, but it ain't helping my swing. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Claude Harmon, too. He's, just, he's one of my teachers, too. He's been helping me a lot. That's great. That's, That's great. That's awesome. And this right here, beautiful cut here. Drive, and they find the, the, uh, the diver right there to the basket. Monroe, great awareness, but all of that activity, forcing the defense to shift as the Hornets have gone to man-to-man. -to -man. The Eagles having their way at the rim now as opposed to the three-point line earlier in the game. Well, I was going to say, they go from zone to man to now they're just letting everybody through the front door. <laughs> <laughs> Jumper opens up the lane. It really does. And then Sodom not being in there. You think with Sodom out there, they pressure the wings and funnel everybody to him at the rim. One more. One more. Yeah. Good ball movement by Delaware State. The three is no good by Miles Carter before Central went on that... 4 nothing run, Dell State 9-0, but here's a look at this bucket inside. Man, just a great drive, great awareness right there, too. He understood that no one was on the weak side, just a quick drive. And as you said, because he hit a couple of threes early, the defense got out to him, two dribbles at the rim for the easy two. Zach Kent inbounding the ball for Delaware State. Zach Kent is another guy who's been out for a while, been injured, but he is a big guy, stretch four, can really shoot the ball. Working his way back into shape as Carter knocks down a jump shot. Hey, G, for coming out of high school to a guy who played actual college ball and we both played professional, what do you feel like is the biggest difference from college to pro? Oh, wow. Uh, I, I think <laughs> there's a lot. Um, obviously, the talent level. You have so many, you know, so much greater talent, the best players in the world in the NBA. Uh, I also think just the more free time. As you know now, as a student athlete, the responsibilities as, as, as an athlete, as a student, living on campus, 
Um, you know, I, I think, you know, you're an adult. You're a professional now. You, you have responsibilities. Ecology is still somewhat dependent on others. So it just forces you to grow up quicker when you make that jump. And what you did and others, and I couldn't do that at 18. I needed, I needed four, time, four years to, to get myself together, mature on and off the court before I was ready for, for the big stage. I always, I often think about now and, you know, being able to go back to school and being able to be ready and having time management kind of understood as a grown man to, you know, being an 18-year-old kid, being my first time away from home, how, how different it was from the experience of being a professional to being, a, again, a 36-year-old freshman. That's a great point. I, I just I, I just have to ask this one question. Because once again, you were on fire from deep. But where would you have gone to school? And don't say uh, it. I know you. <laughs> All right. Hold that right thought, Dan. Hold that thought. We'll get you when we come back. Going to send you guys on a quick break. North Carolina Central University, Delaware State University in Newark, New Jersey. We'll be back after this. is putting on a show knocking down threes all over the court against his own defense of the hornets and he is really feeling it six for seven from the field five for six from the three-point line and for good measure at times too getting to the rim all assisted too by his teammate eric boone so on the big stage for the eagles miller getting it done we still have almost eight minutes to play. Miller, five for six from three, as you mentioned. 17 points is the most for a first half in Central history of their program. Five threes is the most in any half, and we still have a ton more time to play. Actually, I want to check in with our Taylor Rooks because she's got more on Randy Miller Jr. Taylor? That's right, Stephanie. And, but you guys are right. Randy doesn't just give the team points, though. He gives them a lot of leadership. I was just listening into the huddle. Lots of high five, lots of words of encouragement. I talked to some of his teammates, and they were saying, look, we don't have a bunch of seniors, but we absolutely have Randy. We look to him when we need a spark, and we look to him to always get the job done, guys. That is awesome. Taylor, thanks. And, of course, we appreciate your eavesdropping, Taylor, because we can't get over that. You got to have that, though, in a team, right? You need one guy who can get you a bucket, but also is positive and encouraging for his teammates. Central in transition. That's Nicholas for that. Yeah, and right now you're seeing the depth pay off right now. The energy that the Eagles have out here and their ability to convert from defense to offense. Impressive. For Gala. For shooter. It's interesting, the part of Miller's game, I mean, he's, he's shown his three-point shooting, but he's so crafty with the ball. He's so good at getting to the free-throw line. I've watched a lot of tape. His ability to attack and get to the rim and draw fouls. Incredible. Chris Monroe attacks the three. It's no good. Avery Richardson with the ball for Delaware State. Delaware State trying to go inside. on the floor and Grant as you mentioned that's not really his game he is a three-point specialist but required to do more yeah that is game right there but that is Central's game right there forcing turnovers and then flying down the court look at that Lavelle Moulton seeing his guy dive on the floor get a little dirty get a little floor burn if necessary every point every possession counts so important so valuable and Central making the most of it I love to watch the action, right? I mean, you have these student athletes who are doing things that maybe outside of their comfort zone, but that's part of how you find success in life, right? JR, I mean, you took a huge leap going back to school, joining the ball team. 
Yeah, um, definitely something out of my comfort zone. Uh, step, like uh, Graham was talking about earlier, just stepping on that tee box, that first tee, and you know, it's, it's, knowing it's totally different from friends and friends of doing that every stroke actually counts. So, uh, but again, you, you learn a lot about yourself. You adapt to situations, and um, you you overcome a, lo a lot of fears. I can't even imagine the challenge. I mean, I had a hard enough time when I was going <laughs> straight to school. <laughs> I, I'll tell you. I mean, I'll tell you. I mean, you and I obviously haven't haven't gone many me longer. I was gonna say, don't you marry me? <laughs> a couple years, a couple years ago for you. I mean, yeah, about 30 years ago, but I couldn't imagine now going back. Right. And I really applaud what Jr. has done. And, and the fact he's gone to an HBCU, he's brought visibility to the program. He's also brought an incredible golf games to the program as well and uh, i just think it's a, a fantastic message and, I, and it sounds like you're getting a lot out of the experience as well which is obviously what it's all about so uh i, I applaud you man and uh, salute you on that and encourage you to continue on which i know you will and represent for us all absolutely appreciate it uh, it's, it's something i definitely wasn't expecting you know, to fall in love with actually going to school but being a kid who didn't like school as much as i did growing up to be able to fall in love with learning and educating myself and continuously try to get better at uh, be more of a well-rounded person has been you know uh something i've really been uh, harnessing in on and something i really appreciate giving myself patience and time to uh, overcome these fears it's great. amazing the love, of, the love of learning. Yes, I love that. Me too. I hope my kids will listen to it. Find out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Delaware State with the basketball. Delaware State just kind of hanging around here, down 10. It could be down even further as Central Dontavious King has called for a, a walk there on that defensive rebound, but. The Hornets don't want to let this thing get out of control here. Down 10 with just over five minutes left here in the first half. If they can chip away, maybe go in at halftime at least down six. They want to stay in striking distance and not let this game get out of hand. Of Saw them back in the game. Yeah, of course, getting stops. And, and, and of course, got to be efficient on the offensive end. And I'd like to see them pressure with Sodom protecting the rim, the Hornets. And one. Oh, wow. I wasn't expecting That's that your one. guy, JR. Randy Miller Jr. in transition. Yeah, I mean, that was that was tough right there. He had to yeah, avoid sure. the, tra the, the travel and the charge and the touch right there to get that off the glass. He's showing it all in his bag here I, I think he gave himself a flat tire. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know if, I don't know if somebody touched him. I've done that before. <laughs> The Invesco QQQ Legacy Classic is proudly supported by HBO Max, all the biggest premieres all in one place, and by JBL. Look at Miller, not only playing great offense, but picking up full court. The effort defensively not slowing down at all for the Eagles. Oh, a little battle inside, getting some attention. Sodom trying to post up for Delaware State and Dontavious King not having it, trying to fight over the top defensively. And I don't understand. I mean, I mean, obviously you love the effort. Obviously you want to front the post, but when he's seven three, hey. you might as well just let him catch right? it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a lose-lose proposition, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? I'm going to try to push him out right, the post. Right, right. Because, yeah, if you fight over the top, they're just going to lob it over. And if you stand behind them, he's just going to shoot over. It's, it's, uh, it's a problem. It is a problem. <laughs> it is a problem. JR, how about when you had to face players like Sodom who were just, you know, that much bigger and taller? Do you try to attack them? Do you go right at them? What's the plan? Yeah, I try to. I just try to outwork them. Try to beat them to the spots. Uh, try to front the post and try to play little uh, games with them. 
more than anything, and then to try to hope. If anything, we, a lot of pressure on Cleveland. We try to front the post and then make somebody come over the play over the top. A lot of times we had a great help defense, so it, it worked out for my favor. Thank God. <laughs> I, I used to say the best defense is good offense. Oh Lord. <laughs> yeah. Make them work on Absolutely. the other end. I'm sure your coaches loved that. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> But give the big fella credit. Sodom is out. He's come back in the game. He's made, it, made a little bit of an impact here. Get some touches inside. I think he's got to get involved here. He's too big and too long to not, not be having an impact on this game. Miles Carter with the ball. Finds Pagala. Chris Smith posting up. Great dig right there. Yeah, man. Caldwell digging in the post right there. As JR says, Scrappy forcing that turnover. Take a look at that turnover again. Active hands, great anticipation right there. And then at the end of that play, Smith a little frustrated. He lost the ball. Call for that little bump. And Caldwell at the line. We haven't seen much from Caldwell here tonight, but he is, man, he can shoot the ball as well. And he, he moves without the ball well and has no costumes from the three-point line. He shoots 42% from behind the arc, which puts him fourth in the meet. And he hasn't even gotten started yet, Frank. Well, it's been all Miller, you know, and so you feed the hot hand, and right now Miller more than capable, but I'll tell you, this guy Caldwell right here, he, he can flat out shoot it. It'll be interesting to see how the defense adjusts to guarding Miller. It was hard, too. I mean, coming off the bench, I've watched him take this guy, Caldwell. He comes right off the bench and fires away, <laughs> which is not an easy thing to do when you're not in the rhythm. Pope swings it. Bucking is good. Chris Monroe knocks it down. He's coming off of winning co-defensive player of the week for the Miami. CCU is proud with so much hustle and grit right now. They're just winning off the hustle points. So important. It is important. Can't coach effort. You know, guys have effort. That's a that's a beautiful pass right there inside. Attack the pressure. Don't you know what I'm saying? Don't don't have the pressure attack you. Go at the pressure right there, getting into the paint for the easy two. But Central has really been textbook here in this first half on both ends of the floor. Uh-oh. Great extra pass. Chris Monroe coming up with a season high 17 points, so he's now about to start get going. And, and, and right now, Lavelle Moten smart. He's attacking the big, putting him in screen and roll, forcing him to rotate, and of course, the big fella Monroe knocking down the threes a couple possessions in a row. It's another battle inside. And, and look at the big fella sliding those feet, trying to get there and close out just a little too late. As Monroe filled it, getting in the game from downtown like Miller. Let's do a better job of talking, fellas. Let's make sure we communicate. So everybody knows what's going on. Yo, we got to get stops down here, man. They got too many points. Well, let's get a little, little, little bit more movement, right? A little bit more aggressive offensively. Don't be so passive out here. Guards, be willing to go ahead and attack it. Let's go, man. We're here now. Let's go. Let's go. We're here now. That was Audio Tracks presented by JBL. An opportunity to hear from both coaches, Grant. I like the messaging. Great messaging. These are leaders, teachers, obviously employing their guys to follow the game plan, stay in the game, and so great access right there. And two very talented coaches who've had story careers as we see another great, talented individual. The great. The great. <laughs> Serena the Williams. The GOAT. Exactly. The GOAT. It was, it's just an honor to be in, in her presence. Oh, no question. I have to stand up and salute. Hey. You and I both. Just on the same court. I had my feet on the same surface. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's incredible, obviously, the success and the longevity oh of her dominance in that sport. 
just a huge fan of, of her and her entire family. I, I am with you on that, and I saw something that I talked about it with my kids. She gave like a little tour of her trophy room, and she, there was a second place trophy in there from one of the Grand Slams. She's like, what is this doing in here? I throw these away. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't have many of those no. second place finishes. Exactly. But she was upset yeah. that it was on display. I said, that's what, you, that's what you strive for. Serena Williams, the great Serena Williams, will be joining our halftime crew. Kevin Frazier, Quentin Richardson, Renee Montgomery. They will all be up there. And I'm, I'm a little jealous. We might have to go up there at halftime. Mean, Quentin, he's getting all the stars here today. Yeah. Quentin's up there with Renee. He's up there with Michael B. Jordan. He's up there with Serena. And you're down here with me. I, I mean, was, come on. Like, uh, you, you, I was just thinking be, yeah. Thank goodness JR's here. Thank you, JR. <laughs> uh, hey, I'm over here slumming there in Miami while you guys are over there with all the stars. <laughs> We have a feeling you're not slumming, okay? We have a feeling you're not slumming. <laughs> right. Oh, my goodness. All right, just under 2.30 to go in this first half. Uh, Central's up 40 to 23 over Delaware State. And we talked earlier at the five-minute mark. Ten-point game. Central was in control, and the Hornets we felt like they needed to close that first half strong. In the last two or three minutes here, this run that the Eagles have been on, extending this lead, has been, been impressive. Ronald Lucas on the line for Delaware State. Social Change Fund United and Bleacher Report teamed up for a capsule collection celebrating the legacy of six HBCUs. The collection was created in partnership with seven black designers. Visit BleacherReportShop.com to show your support for HBCUs today and every day. North Carolina Central University bits the ball. Eagles looking to pull away even more, Grant. They, that they are. And they've done a, a fantastic job here in the first half and looking to close out this half strong. Good hands in here by LJ. Right back, another steal. Turnovers could be the story today. You know how hard it is to get back in the game if you can't maintain your possession. I told you. I told you. He can heat up, man. Alex Caldwell. Bell Bolton over there still coaching hard, not netting up right now. When you get this big lead, it's not about the scoreboard. It's about right. playing the right way. Eagles basketball. Look, I, I had a chance, JR, you may not know this, but I took classes at Central back in the day. Ah. And so I knew Lavelle, watched him, great shooter, great player. Clifton Day was a great athlete for those Eagles back in the day. And um, great tradition they had 25, 30 years ago, and he's maintained that. Had great success with this program. Well, some people may not know at home, Duke University and North Carolina Central University, both in Durham. Yeah, both in Durham, very close to one another. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, I definitely used to go over there to the cafeteria, Fish Fry Fridays. See, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Fried chicken Wednesday, Wednesdays. Mm -mm -mm. We spent a lot of time on Central's campus, but uh, a great program historically. And Bill Moten, known for getting his team throughout the course of the season better and stronger. They've had success winning their conference and getting to the tournament multiple times in yes. recent years. Yes, as evidenced by four MEAC regular season titles in 2017, 15, and 14. For MEAC tournament titles, 19, 18, 17, and 14. He was NABC District 15 Coach of the Year in 2015. Lavelle Moten, certainly an accomplished coach. And he's also been part of USA Basketball. Yes. He's been on, on, on some of the, I think, the under-17 team that won a gold medal a few years ago. So a great coach who's had opportunities to leave and go to other mid-majors, but has stayed loyal here at NC Central. Ronald Luke is getting an offensive rebound. Trying to give Delaware State another chance. How about this? Moten went to the same high school from the same neighborhood as Nate McMillan, P.J. Tucker, 200 wins. And so good that they've given him a mural in his hometown. So Lavelle Moten, who I've, like I said, known for a long, long time, 
He's been visible, accessible, really loved in the community in Durham, and uh, a real fantastic coach here on this level. Hey, let's check in with Taylor Rooks for more. Yeah, Coach Moten is so popular in the basketball community, not just in college, but within the NBA. I spoke with Chris Paul earlier this week, and he was just telling me how vital he is to the college landscape, how much it shows that he cares about the guys that he, you know, is still in North Carolina, still caring about their lives off the court. Kevin Durant talked about his relationship with Coach Moten. He even sent shoes to the team this season, so he's definitely a beloved member of the basketball community, guys. Man, I love that. I mean, you're talking about the creme de la creme giving you high praise. You get better than that. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, thank you so much. Excellent reporting, as always. All right, guys, we'll be back. Just under a minute left to play the first half. Shinsia, bless up. How you doing? You good? I'm good. Everybody talking about this new album coming. Ooh, you, you know, know. it's new energy. This is why I love Pandora, because I discovered you on Pandora. Yeah? Yes. Why? Nice. Yes, because on my station, I got certain station vibes that I love, and I love going in deep cut. Central Center, Justin Wright is on the free throw line for North Carolina Central University. Cameron Butler just subbed in for the Eagles. Once again, Central as Miller takes a break. Deserves that. <laughs> He's been incredible. 20 points. Seven for eight from the from the field. Great leadership, defense. This central team is really kind of peaking here before their regular season begins. Conference play. This has been fun to watch if you're an Eagles fan. Absolutely. And you said that Coach Moten's team typically do get better and better. They've won two in a row, so they're trying to make it three here. Fagala with the miss for the Hornets. Rebound goes to Cameron Butler. Which right now, they'll play for one shot right here. And watch Caldwell. He moves well without the basketball. He may pass it. Maybe a flare screen. Get it to wide open three. Wouldn't be surprised if he takes his last shot. Dribble penetration, though, to that corner three. It's going to yes. be a recurring theme tonight. It is, and it's early. We still have a whole half to play. Uh, North Carolina Central University up 49 to 24 as halftime begins. This is the first game of a doubleheader. Remember, we've got J.R. Smith School coming up next yep. in the afternoon. North Carolina A&T University will be taking on Howard University. Pride. And here we go. Let's throw it down to our Taylor Rooks. <laughs> Coach Randy Miller shooting lights out offensively. What is leading to his success? He had a good couple of weeks of practice. We've been on him. He haven't played with the proper pace. And so I really challenged him to step up. He's our senior leader. He's the guy that's been in this atmosphere, this environment before. So he's stepping up. He, he set the pace early on. I'm, I'm proud of him. In the huddle, I heard you discussing not letting up. How do you ensure they don't take their feet off the gas? Well, we try to play one possession at a time. Let's not look at the big scope of things. Let's not look at the, the, the point differential. Just try to be as perfect each possession. And then when you look up, you hopefully we'll establish a lead. All right. Thanks so much, Coach. Stephanie, Taylor, thank you so much. Thank you, Coach Moten, for stopping. As we mentioned earlier, halftime is coming up. Make sure you stay tuned. Kevin Frazier is hosting. Serena Williams will be a guest at the desk. Quentin Richardson and Renee Montgomery will be there as well. Halftime is coming up after this break. Ventures yeah. and Serena is here and joins us now. Serena, you just gave away a million dollars. You changed right. this yeah. young man's yeah. life. Dollars. <laughs> also, stay tuned after this game for the Bleacher Report Slam Dunk Contest presented by HBO Max. Uh, the Hampton Pirate in the house. The team's not here, but it's still a party in the house. And uh, we'll be back with more. 49-24, your score. I've been attending an HBCU. For one, it's the culture. For two, just the importance of being an African-American student, following the tradition that a lot of people have left before me. You're around your people all the time. Uh, it makes it special because you can be you, be yourself. You just see everybody come together and just cheering each other on. So 
much good basketball. There's a second half to come up also on the way. Stay tuned after this game for the Bleacher Report Slam Dunk Contest presented by HBO Max. Uh, the Hampton Pirate in the house. The team's not here, but it's still a party in the house. And uh, we'll be back with more 49-24, your score. Impatience is a virtue. right there 49 24 central is up and you see a lot of three-pointers made and a lot missed that's been the difference and also a lot of turnovers by delaware state central able to convert off of that and right away inside by central that is dontavius king and i'm sorry that that is lavelle mode go right at the big fella right there great little set there being able to finish against Link. I mean, it's so interesting because they came out on fire in the first half from beyond the arc, established that, and now going inside. And for an update on the Hornets, let's check in with our Taylor Rooks. Yeah, Stephanie, I actually spoke with Stan Waterman coming out of the half, and I said, what was your message to the guys in the locker room? He said, really play harder. We are not executing, and they are shooting so well. And he said, you know, when you look at the stat sheet, it's really just Miller Jr., and we're not able to stop him, and we did not anticipate it. So his message is really just focus on Miller Jr., guys. Taylor, thank you so much, and Miller Jr., as we mentioned, uh, a quiet storm, if you will. He can definitely get a bucket, and he did lots of that in the first half. Five for six from behind the arc. Well, let's see if they can continue shooting the ball, or Miller can continue <laughs> shooting the ball from the three-point line in the second half. But also, let's see if the effort picks up. You know, if they can play a little harder as their coach wants. And beautiful drive, but beautiful block by King. Near turnover in. To your coach's point, Randy Miller Jr. shooting 29% from behind the arc coming into this game, Grant. Well, I'll tell you what, that percentage is going up. <laughs> just, just a little bit. It's going up. That's for sure. Shoot, shoot. That's right. I'm not a bad petition, but I know it's going up. And I tell you what, it is definitely going up. Monroe, once again, Central knocking down three pointers. And I think it's his third three point shot made. Yes. From Monroe tonight, today, excuse me. They are on fire from behind the arc, Central is. Delaware State just can't seem to get things going. The pressure, the intensity right there. Actually, good deflection defensively from Stansbury, but everything is contested. You know, right now, defensively, Central making the Hornets uncomfortable, executing their stuff, not getting easy looks, easy opportunities. That's Lavelle Bolton. That's the way they play on display. And you can see I forgot we're bringing the ball up, but Avery Richardson is in the game for Delaware State, possibly to help with some of that ball handling responsibility. Hornets working the ball around. Fergala trying to attack, draws the foul. And, and that's not really his game right there, but give credit. Right now, the, the Eagles are, every time Fergala gets the ball on the catch, there's somebody in his space. Yep. That's understanding the scouting report, understanding he's a shooter and a guy who's had a 31-point game this season. Uh, but I like what he did right there, attack the closeout. Get off the bounce, force, force him to foul, and be aggressive. Fergala, shot fake from the corner, takes the baseline, turns the basketball over. Central in transition. Shot attempt, no good. Put back, two, no good. Justin Wright pulls it out. Randy Miller Jr. attacking. Call the foul out. And, and I don't mind that right there. Stansbury being a little bit more physical, like somebody gets going, Jr. You got to get in their space right there. He got called for a foul, a little tussle there at the end of the play, but 
Right there, two guys on Miller, not let him get off. Yeah, you got to make him feel you. You got to make him uncomfortable. He's little, moving around real freely, making shots and feeling good. You got to make him uncomfortable. Wide open, Miller Jr. again nails it. That looks really comfortable, JR. <laughs> He's wide open every time he gets the ball. And even when somebody is there, he still thinks he's open. So when you got that mentality, shooting the ball is easy. Well, I'm glad you brought that up. JR, just tell us what that's like as Great Central pass. Force in transition. That was Dontavious King. But you mentioned even if he was covered, he still thinks he would make it. What's that mentality like as a shooter? This is the supreme confidence, you know, the, the time and effort that you spend on your craft and how many shots you shoot and uh, having that repetition and believing, uh, you know, the shot is going to eventually fall. Uh, again, you shoot so many, when you work on your shot and you shoot so many shots, uh, I seen a Steph commercial the other day and it's like, what do you think about? Absolutely nothing because I've shot my shot so many times. Mm -hmm. It looks like Miller has shot that shot many times. <laughs> here tonight <laughs> and that one was actually contested but as you know once you get it going you start having that confidence and start believing right there as Miller has knocked down that three-pointer this is fun to watch him shoot early as he's six for seven from behind the arc now North Carolina Central is on a 10-0 run here to start the second half not not what Waterman wanted here from this ball club but like I said it's really the effort and the intensity here defensively. Nothing easy on the offensive end. It's a struggle on this side of the floor here for the, for the Hornets. Nice drop off. Fergala finds DeMarco Balco. And that was actually a good play. Dribble penetration, forced to help. Drop off for the easy two. Why not? Wow. <laughs> From deep, JR. Uh, three for five from three. That's impressive. It is. <laughs> three point attempt, no good. The putback is no good either. Chris Smith there with that offensive rebound. Corner shot. Rims out. But King is there for the putback. King, big body, strong guy, gives it presence inside. The physicality this team needs, and on the glass, getting it done. And I'll tell you what, he did, he anticipated the miss, which I wouldn't have done because Miller hasn't missed much. But right now, it's been all central inside and outside as well. Time to fly. Resurrections replay in theaters and on HBO Max this Wednesday. And how about this here? Eric Boone, fantastic delivery all night long. 11 assists, zero turnovers, dominating. I used to tell my girls when they were young, sharing is caring. <laughs> they didn't listen, but Eric Boone gets it. Delivering to his teammates frequently and often. Man, and a new career high for the young man. 11 assists, and we still have 15, 20 to go. I mean, he is the maestro, he is the traffic cop, he is the conductor, he's the Stephanie Reddy <laughs> of the Eagles. <laughs> All right. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Grant. He's, JR, you see what he's doing? He's just trying to get get me on his good side because he doesn't want us to tell the truth about all the things that he talks about, you know, not being as good a shooter as you. You know. That's true. That's, that's true. He's, he's a good shooter. Hey. That's a good hey, hey, Coach told me one time there's a difference between you got to either a, a piano mover, a piano tuner, or a piano player. And you got to know what you want. So I know what I am. <laughs> I love it. That's half the battle right there, man. You don't know what you know what you're good at, man. Because you get on a team and you're trying to win a championship and guys doing these drills that they've been working out on all summer long. And it don't fit the team and fit what you're trying to do. It can, it can mess you up. So knowing what you're good at is a, a great way to start. Excellent message. So you guys, Delaware State, they're down a significant amount. And I think it's we have to give them their 
just do it, okay? They just found out they were going to be playing this game yesterday. They had less than 24 hours to prepare for the game, let alone to get here to play. New head coach, uh, Stan Waterman, it's his first season at Delaware State, and they're injured. I mean, they have a long list of guys that are out. Martez Robinson, he's out. Uh, Fahim Janetto is out with an injured knee. He's missed the last five games, and he's shooting 33% from behind the arc. So they've got bodies that are able to play. And you're so right, Stephanie. I mean, Delaware State, as we look here at some of the, the bio of this university, Hornets, but it's been a tough go. I mean, obviously, injuries, new coach, as you said, a young team he's putting out here. And then to get the call, <laughs> less than 24 hours, no time to prepare. They come out here, they didn't get a chance to have a shoot around, get used to the environment as North Carolina Central and the other schools did, but they came out, laced them up, they're out here competing. And it's not maybe indicative of who they are completely. Right. It's kind of like AAU conditions. Yeah, exactly to the gym five minutes before. Eat a uh, Junior Baker cheeseburger and get right back up here on court. <laughs> uh, junior Bacon cheeseburger right there. Well, I tell you what, after the way Central has played here, they might get some Junior Bacon cheeseburgers. A lot of energy on defense, creating turnovers, getting out and converting on the other end. This is an opportunity, though, for their program to grow. I mean, you never want to hear about this, right? And I know, JR, you can attest to this. You don't want to hear about moral victories. But the truth of the matter is, this is a learning experience for this team. They can take this and build on it. JR, how can they take this experience and figure out ways to get better from it? Well, I mean, first of all, again, they're a young team. So, I mean, being in this situation coming with years to come, it's, it's definitely a growth process. You're playing against this, uh, a team that plays extremely hard, a veteran, an older team, uh, guys who've been playing together for a while with a, with a coach who's been there for, you know, obviously a while. And that's, that's a tough thing to just acclimate, get acclimated to. But, I mean, it has so much benefits when you really look at it, when you grow with your teammates, when you're an uh, underclassman and try to get better and you know you go back and look at this game a game like this when you're a, a junior or a senior and be like you know what? we actually got better we helped this program move forward in a better position than what we had it. Yeah, and I love what you said there JR I mean this is a young group coach Waterman trying to come in he talked yesterday we had a chance to visit with him on zoom very late last night we just talked about wanting to to build a culture here uh, at Delaware State, it has a vision, knows how to execute. He's got some good young, talented players on his ball club. They have to learn what it's like at this level to compete and to be successful. And sometimes you, you know, going through adversity, going through struggles, that's how you build that grit, that resolve. That's how you evolve and, and become a better player and a better person. And so it'll be interesting to follow and see this ball club throughout the season and over the next couple of years. Absolutely, and Coach Rodman is a Delaware native, born and raised, played his college basketball at the University of Delaware, that's a Division I school, was, as you said, a legendary high school coach grant with his three decades of service at that level, won multiple state titles, so he is an accomplished coach. This is a situation that he looks forward to developing and growing this program in his home state. He does, he does. There's a real pride that he has for uh, his state, and he was talking about Delaware and the beaches. He was making me want to go visit. I, I, <laughs> I highly recommend that. Yeah, no, he was, and you were talking about him as well, he was talking about Delaware, and so you know, he, he understands what the challenge ahead, but he's excited for it. And a great opportunity for this program. And I like that they're not quitting. I mean, it, when you have a score like this, it's easy to just lay down, but you can see. Still attacking defensively. And speaking of attacking right there, once again, boom, delivering. Beautiful pass. The Invesco QQQ Legacy Classic is proudly supported by GEICO. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. 
and by the Wells Fargo Active Cash Card. Earn unlimited 2% cash back on purchases. North Carolina Central University up big here in the second half. Cameron Butler on the line makes that free throw. He earned a defensive player of the week honor in the conference. So they have a couple of players who are locked down defenders. Well, those are the kind of players that Lavelle Moten recruits. You know, guys that are committed to, to buying in, being a part of something bigger than themselves. And guys that are committed to playing on this side of the floor defensively. So he fits right in, but I love the extra effort here on this possession on the offensive end for the Hornets, and in particular Carter, fighting, scrapping, hanging around the basket. Almost had a three-point play opportunity. Miles Carter. It's hard going through so much stuff that this team has gone through and watching it, and then you know you still come out and play against a team that just doesn't miss. You know, some games you just, it just happens like that. This team, you look at the, the team, I mean, they're shooting 65 percent from the from three, 55 percent from the field, opposed to a team that's shooting 22 percent from the field and six percent from three. So I mean, it just it, sometimes it just happens like that where you have injuries and you know falling to new circumstances. On top of a team that just comes out hot and just starts hitting. It's the perfect storm, Jr. So true. Good going by Central, but Delaware State not giving up defensively. North Carolina Central up 69 to 30 over Delaware State. Second half action will continue on the other side of this break. Legacy Classic Taylor. North Carolina Central with a commanding lead over Dell State, but I am here with Bachelor star and entrepreneur Matt James. Now, Matt, I hear growing up in North Carolina, you were actually coached by Lavelle Moten. Tell me what that experience was like. Moten ran the hell out of me. That's the most <laughs> I've ever run. I played in college. I played in the professionals. I've never ran more than when I played for Coach Moten. Does it seem like things have changed as you watch him on the sideline? It doesn't. It looks like he's got those guys in good shape, and by the score, it looks like he's hasn't skipped a beat. Absolutely. So tell me, you know, growing up in North Carolina, you have seen a very rich HBCU culture. Describe to somebody what that is like down south. I think it's hard to describe for that for my students. We brought a handful of students that we work with in the inner city, and it's important for them to see that although HBCs only make up 3% of the educational system, 25% of uh, African-American graduates came from HBCUs as well as 50% of African-American school teachers come from HBCU. So when they see these athletes out here competing, when they see representation out here, it's so important for our students so they can aspire for that. And you touch on something really important is, you know, it isn't just the athletics at HBCUs. So many black professionals come from HBCU. So can you just tell me more about why they're important to the landscape of America? A lot of education was out of reach for a lot of people like myself, uh, people who look like me, and people who look like our students. And it's important that we bring them around people who look like them so they can aspire to do those things, see themselves in these positions, and work for themselves. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time. Enjoy the game. And who are you rooting for? I'm going for Central. <laughs> Come on, now I'm going with Coach Moe, the legend right there. Now I'm excited. All right, absolutely. Thanks so much, man. Thank you, Have a good time. <laughs> All right, Taylor Rooks, thank you so much. Thank you, Matt James, for stopping. And I got to tell you, my ears perked up when I heard him say professional. Did he play professional? I missed it. I, I, I did not know that. I, you know, Taylor Rooks gets the scoop. She there, does. But I didn't know he played professional. I got to look. I got to Google that. Uh, let's do it. <laughs> and, and fill me in. <laughs> well, I do love what he said about the importance of HBCUs. And obviously, it's access, it's opportunity, yeah. but also it's support. And I love what we're doing here. Michael B. Jordan, the Warner Media family, Invesco QQQ, really stepping up, providing this exposure for this, these programs here to, to today with this game. But we also got to continue to support financially and provide resources, not just for the programs, but for the schools in general. So I love that message from Matt. And uh, I can't wait to Google his professional career. <laughs> some notable alumni from North Carolina Central University. Kim Coles, the actor, I did not know that she went to Central. I didn't know, I didn't know Maynard Jackson, 
Sam Jones, obviously the, the legend yes. for the Celtics, but my man, ninth wonder, was at Central when I was there, a little younger than me, but uh, now is a professor wow. of music at North Carolina Central and at Duke University impressive. as well. Impressive. Yeah, so shout out to ninth wonder. That's impressive. Very impressive, very impressive. I always thought I might go back and teach in college. You should. Maybe I should get that for my summer I game. think so. You think so? Great. <laughs> JR. Carolina a and we need a, we need a journalism, uh, someone like yourself, come teach journalism to our students. There you go. All right, we'll put that out there. I love how he's I know. advocating. JR's and he's saying best. we. I love that. He is all in. Yes. And people for who sure. are just joining us. Oh, no, oh, he didn't go there, did There he? she go. Okay. <laughs> There she, she got the felines on. She got the felines on. That's the it. She got felines. the felines. That's right. Wow. Okay. They dug that up. Player and a coach. I was. I don't know if I should thank them or what for that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I want to give our crew credit for digging it up. So excellent job. But I'm not sure if I appreciate it or not. Well, we appreciate it. You know, we've heard <laughs> about the uh, the great career you had on the basketball oh, court. And uh, to see that footage. And uh, we, uh, we know you your experiences as a player and as a coach and now as a broadcaster I mean, you've pretty much done it all in the world of basketball and uh been a pioneer kind of in a lot of ways too yeah it's very impressive thank you i'm like the isaiah thomas of, of the women's of a woman you know isaiah thomas has checked every box there is for basketball player owner gm executive founder he's done everything broadcast that is true you're right I'm not an owner yet i think that's it's coming that's a good it's hat to want to wear i tell you that that's a great inspiration for young African American women like yourself, and to, for somebody who's raising four beautiful young black women, it's it's a it's, it's a great thing. We need to show more of that. I don't think it's enough uh, emphasis on showing more women of color doing what you're doing and the things you've accomplished. Thank you, Jr. So kind. And I, I just want to make a note because we've been talking about how Jr. Smith's such a good shooter. I gave you a little bit of hard time, Grant. The picture of me with the hands up, like I'm ready to shoot, but you see I'm running. So clearly. Not ready to shoot. No, but you might be running into the shot. You know, you're moving without the ball. I mean, great shooters like JR, they got to get to the spot. And so, yeah, hey, I know you're going to, they called you two clap Stephanie. Oh, my goodness. He's you say, hilarious. You say, don't make me clap twice. <laughs> but clap, the ball better be right here. Don't make me clap twice. That's what I heard they called you back in the day. That is true. Filas, though, the Grant Hill Filas. We were one of the only Division I programs at that time to wear Filas. I had the coat, the well, sweats, the whole bit. Well, Fila was based in Baltimore. Yes. The U.S. headquarters were right outside of Baltimore, so it certainly makes a lot of sense. And uh, that's awesome. That's incredible. Again, great job by our crew, but thank you, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go digging up any more old <laughs> photos from way back in the day. We just let that live in the last century. Oh, my goodness. My I think. No, well, not your part, but my part. I, I think we may have something uh -oh. lined uh -oh. up along those lines because uh -oh. we've got connections later on. Oh, As we've talked about our second game, J.R. Smith's school that he is currently enrolled in and a member of the golf team, North Carolina A&T State University, is playing the Bison of Howard University. And our Grant Hill has some connections to the Bison squad, in particular head coach Kenny Blakeney. But... We'll get into that more. Count that as your tease to stay tuned. Hey, I got some trivia for you guys. So we all know, everybody knows, that Bill Russell, the legendary Bill Russell, and Sodom misses right there at the rim, upset with himself and not being able to get that finish. But we all know that Bill Russell is the all-time uh, all-time leader of NBA titles yes. in the NBA. I think he had 11 of them. My question is, who comes in second place? I actually do know the answer to this, so I will pause and see if JR wants to. Uh, I believe I do, too. We, <laughs> he, I to, he used to come speak, speak to us all the time and during the... Uh, during the player meetings and the PA meetings. Oh, man, what is my guy's name? Well, there he goes, a, a great legend right there, Julius Irving on the screen here in attendance. And obviously, 
one of the greatest. Not him, though. It's not Julius Irving, right, Dr. Right. J. Not him. But I'll say it's, it's Sam Jones, yes. who is an alum of North Carolina Central. And Sam Jones, five-time NBA All-Star, three-time All-NBA, member of the Basketball Hall of Fame. But he has 10 NBA titles. It's a lot of rings, buddy. A lot of rings. A lot of rings. Sure. Dr. J in the building to observe, but also to participate. Remember, we've got a dunk contest between these two games. Dr. J, one of the judges. Let me tell you something. My rookie year in the NBA, I played an all-star game in Phoenix. And after the game, I met Dr. J. He came in the locker room. You got to stand. I grew up a huge Dr. J fan. And I will tell you more about this story when we come back. But the legend is in the building, the doctor. Speaking of Dr. J, let's flash back to 1976, the ABA duck contest from the free throw line. The doctor, yes, from the free throw line. And I mean, man, I'll tell you what, man, he was incredible. Don't remember him necessarily in the ABA, but when he was in Philadelphia, man, I, that's when I fell in love with the game. And get back to that story, guys. The All-Star game in Phoenix, 1995. He comes and he gives me his phone number. Nice. And let me tell you something. I called him all the time. <laughs> I'd be in the car with my boys, and I'm like, you know, I'm calling, hoping that the answer machine comes. I didn't want him to answer. I just wanted to answer. So a couple of times he answered the phone. I'm like, you know, caught off guard. But, like, the kid in me was excited to know that I had Dr. J's phone number. You that don't understand awesome. how excited I was. My, it's my rookie year in the NBA. That's awesome. Dr. J, as we mentioned, will be a judge for the dunk competition. That'll be in between the two games. BR Slam Dunk presented by HBO Max. It promises to be a doozy. Dr. J still has so much swag, by the way. Oh, swag. I mean, he might be the coolest sure. dude around. I mean, he, he was cool back in the day when he played. He dressed well. Yes. He moved well. He was. He just had a grace about him. It was really when you go back to the early 80s as Commissioner Stern was sort of embracing television and trying to grow the league. He was that face. He was, you know, the equivalent of what LeBron James is right now in the NBA. And he helped grow the game and his theatrics on the floor, his gracefulness, his ability to dunk and just be electrifying, and then talking and presenting and just sort of marketing and selling the league. And his role was incredibly significant in the growth of the game, which we all benefit from now. It's a rare combination of power and grace. Yes. For sure, that finger roll, his hands, the way he used to palm the ball. My dad was, that's one of my dad's favorite players, and he used to talk about Dr. J all the time. And my rookie year, I also remember when the first time I met him, it was just almost a surreal moment. Like, you really think you're meeting like one of your superheroes growing up. Uh, you finally get to meet the doctor. <laughs> Dunks all the time on Sports Center and whatnot. And, uh, it's, a, it's a very, it's a very humbling feeling when you meet legends like that. Absolutely, absolutely. No question, no question. And Jay, I, I, you know, I asked you earlier. We didn't get a chance to to, to, to get your answer because we had a break uh, in the first half. But we were talking about school and what it would have been like if maybe you, know, you didn't go away from high school into the NBA. But I, I had asked. Speaking, Speaking of, of dunks. Dunks. You tried them. Wow. That was an impressive miss right there. As King goes up and almost a poster here, but great contest, great, great attacking of the rim, and that's how you go strong right there. I love that right there. I love confrontations at the rim. For sure. Defense, not he wasn't a scared, I'll tell you that. No. Speaking of a high flyer dunker, take a look at this footage. Oh, okay. Oh, man. Okay. Yes. Oh, I remember that. I was courtside for that. I remember that. I, I had a wristband on my ankle for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. The okay. swag was impeccable. So he wasn't yes, just a shooter. Are. 
played above the rim, That's too. Right. I like that. They call that these days multi-level players, right? I like when that. When you can shoot it from the outside and attack the rim. JR, I mean, I have no idea what that feels like. Help us understand the elevation. Uh, I mean, it used to be something I, I really loved to do. I used to always think, uh, I used to think about Kenny Gaddison and one of my uh, rookie coaches. I used to dunk in the layup line all the time and do all these uh, dunk contest dunks. And he always told me, one day, young fella, you're going to be a groundhog. I was like, man, no way, no way. I'm always going to be out here doing this. And sure enough, about six, seven years ago, I turned into a groundhog. Yeah, hey, I'm with you on that. I used to remember, as I got later in my career, I used to say I got 30 good jumps a season. I'm not going to waste them. I'm, 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 I'm not going to waste it in practice. I'm not going to waste it in layup line. I'm just going to preserve and hope that they come out in a game, hopefully a big game on national TV. It's hard, man, cause especially when you got guys like I'm playing with Bron, and he's uh, he's already a year older than me. He's still out there now doing the dunks he's been doing forever, and I'm just like, man, you know what? I'm just standing at this three-point line, work on my shots, <laughs> get in rhythm, and work on this now, and then you know. <laughs> I feel you, and that's in superhuman what LeBron can still do oh above the rim. It's ridiculous. It is. It is incredible. All those years of longevity. 19 oh, years man. in the league. And by the way, long years. Long we talk about years, finals yeah. runs, Olympics in the offseason. Like, that dude's unbelievable. Yes, he is. And doesn't miss days. I mean, once they talk about load management, we're not, he's in there consistently every day working on his body, in the gym, lifting weights, watching film, and training his mind to compete every single day. And that's what one thing I take my hat off to him. And I don't think he gets enough credit for is his work ethic and his drive to be the very best he can be every single day on and off the court is unmatched. I'm so glad you said that, yeah. JR, because it's so important. You don't just show up and become the king, right? Yeah. No, I mean, that work <laughs> ethic, incredible. And JR would know, having played with him and won championships, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. Well, I still want to know, JR, where would you have right. gone? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's funny because, man, you grew for Central over here. They're, they're A&T's rival. You went to Duke. I was going to go to Carolina. Oh. So I don't know, Grant. I don't know, man. I, it, don't look, it don't look too good for us collegiately. We're going to stick to the pros. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that would have been scary. He snuck it in there, by the Carolina, way. Yeah. He was thinking about Carolina. No, I saw. I heard that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, threw in, he threw in Central and A&T and all that. But, yeah. but I remember that. I remember that. And that would have been huge. Um, you know, you've had a fantastic career and another career that you're starting now. Mm -hmm. So impressive, yeah. man. So much respect. Thank you. I thought all the guys, you know, from that team, uh, when I was going to come in there, you guys won a national championship that year anyway, so y'all didn't need me, so <laughs> you good. <laughs> that was one of my shots right there. Falling out of bounds, going to the left. I like that. Yeah, right here, it's all central. Once again, turnovers forcing them getting out in transition. And on the receiving end is Price on that dunk. And then right here to J.R. Smith, kind of fading to the corner. You got to be special to do that. Caldwell showing off here in Newark. Inside to Sodom. Knocks it down. You go Sodom, able to convert inside, but it's tough here, tough, tough game here today for these Hornets. Conversely for the Eagles, a big confidence booster. Oh. Continue to find their rhythm, and finding the king inside, Dontavius, showing that strength and touch, and I think he is the most important player for this team. Gives them an inside presence. As they go through the MEAC season, being able to have plays like this, just great footwork, great touch inside, brings the physicality as a guy that finishes at the rim and helps with the shooters out there on the floor and having an impressive day here today with those numbers. He is. He leads this uh, central team in rebounding. And when you talk to Coach Moten about who do you go to if you need a bucket in the post, he said, John Davis King is his guy. Just under four minutes to play. Once again, forcing another turnover. They have numbers. And the shooters 
on the wings, wide open, and Caldwell finding inside the big. And so, you know, we talked about this earlier. You know, Delaware State, all the adversity they've gone through, but they really no point guard. Both their point guards out right now. And so, not the time to have them out against this pressure from the Eagles. I mean, it's really the perfect storm for Delaware State. You know, uh, things that could go wrong for you. Bodies out, got some injuries. You get the last minute call. Come into the game and you can see they're playing North Carolina Central and they are all smiles as we take you to break. We'll be back with more action. Long-standing commitment to financial education, Invesco believes that college is a great time to learn skills that build financial independence. As the official financial education program of the NC, using choice-based gameplay. Last month, I had the opportunity to be at the launch of How Not to Suck at Money in Atlanta, and after such a great experience learning about the game and lessons, I can say I really wish I had this back when I was in school. The game is free and can be played at hntsam.com. Guys. Excellent. Thank you, Taylor. I wish I had it too, actually. Me too. Now, now that you bring it up. Yeah. Would have been helpful. I'm sure that was fun, though. Okay, Saddam on the line for Delaware State. 7-3 he's listed at. The tallest player in program history. Well, she has a nice little touch there at the free throw line. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> it's the first time I see the 7-foot-3 dude have some nice touch over there. Yeah. <laughs> Coach Waterman tells the story about walking in the gym and seeing um, Saddam change the net with no ladder. <laughs> you can't teach height, that's for sure. <laughs> Ooh. Step back, no good. Alex Caldwell setting up the offense for the Eagles. Santi Price with the miss. Rebound, Delaware State. Okay. Avery Richardson with the bucket in transition. Nice, nice left hand finish. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Avery Richardson had a career high 14 points on December 6th against Liberty. Richardson drawing the foul there. Turnover by the Eagles. Good ball pressure right there. Offensive foul on Caldwell. Hook in right there. And we're heading for a timeout right here now, Stephanie. We are, Grant. Excellent observation. We'll be back <laughs> with more basketball. <laughs> QQQ Legacy Classic is presented by Invesco QQQ. Proud to support HBCU students and student athletes on and off the court. And by Cricket, everything you want, including the price. Smile, you're on Cricket. We welcome you back inside the Prudential Center. A little dance off, J.R. Smith, between the Hampton Pirates and the North Carolina Central University Eagles. One of the great oh. benefits of going to an HBCU is you get to see the energy from the dance teams and the bands. It's just a, a atmosphere that you can only experience at an HBCU. It is so fun. I remember being on campus at Coppin State and just a random Friday afternoon, a step show might break out. Where else can you find that except on an HBCU right. campus? <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, this, we went to... Uh, our homecoming and they did a stat a step show and that was my first time doing anything with the, with uh, greek fraternities and stuff like that and it was an experience that i would love to continue to experience for the rest of my life it was one of the greatest uh events that i've been to just to see that many people that many young african-american people embracing one another loving one on one another showing their support for one another it was something i've never been a, a part of and it's, it, it was so unbelievable. I just, I just wish more of us can experience it. I agree. You just gave me chills talking about it, bringing back memories, JR. <laughs> Delaware State not laying down. Let's take a look at the turnover here, JR. Cookies. <laughs> Let me get that. <laughs> Defense to offense. Sure. 
Miles Carter, we've been waiting for him to, to come alive. We talked about his story a little bit. Freshman walk-on for Delaware State University was second team all MEAC last season. Chosen preseason first team this season. Number two scorer in the MEAC with 15.2 points. And he's got 18 today. I know before we were talking about more victories, but this is one, one of those things where you can build on for the next game. You see the game is out of whack. Just try to find the rhythm as a team, play harder. Just try to get a, get a rhythm for the game. I know obviously they haven't played as many games as the season just started, but with people, so many people being out, this is the time for the young guys and, the, and these trash minutes, quote unquote, to really set a precedent for themselves going forward. That's a really good point. And sometimes, you know, JR, people don't think that athletes suffer from lack of confidence. But that's a real thing. And you can make a couple of plays here at the end of this game that maybe can give you a little boost, right? Oh, 100%. You know, making making a few shots, feeling that rhythm, feeling good about yourself, going out, going into the next game, even though, you you know, you didn't play as well as one or two for 40 minutes this whole, in this game. You know, you still have to build, be able to build on something and take some type of positives out of every performance. Because at the end of the day, you were trying your best. You were giving your best effort. It's just sometimes it's not good enough. That's right. Sometimes. And then sometimes, like you said earlier, JR, the other team just comes out hot. 100%. I mean, this this team, again, they were, they were shooting the lights out. I mean, the, the percentage has dropped a little bit now with 48% from three. But, I mean, they were shooting 65-plus before the, the, the whole game pretty much. So, again, when you got team. 34 seconds left in this game. But this next game is going to be really interesting. Yes. Howard, they put it up. They let it fly. A and T. I mean, they're they're an impressive ball club. They had a great win. Their last game on the road, East Tennessee State University. So I think we'll get a lot of offensive firepower from both teams here this next next ball game. The potential is there. We're showing you the dunkers in the tunnel waiting for their opportunity to shine. Remember, the dunk contest is here at the Prudential Center between the two games. So, a special treat. Well, Dr. Saw, J judging. Well, Dr. J, and we saw them warming up here yes, yesterday. They got a lot of bounce, these guys. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun to watch. You know, when you're young, you just go up there and, like, as JR said in layup line, you just dunk every time. And you get older, like, I am. You get older like us, you look up at the rim and you're just like, man, that thing is so hot. <laughs> yeah, like, oh. Let's try it again, trying to finish in transition. Look at this, JR. Both those guys go at it right there. I like that. I like the aggressiveness. The aggressiveness and just attacking, playing all 40 minutes and that bench celebration. The enthusiasm on display. North Carolina Central University. of Delaware State. Kudos to Delaware State. We have to say this again. They found out yesterday that they were going to be playing in this game. They had to prep, prepare, show up. They were here participating and giving it their all. And they were down bodies. Significant players that normally play a lot of minutes. So kudos to head coach Stan Waterman and the Delaware State University Hornets. Incredible set of circumstances for Delaware State. As you said, give them a lot of credit for being here, for competing, for having a great effort. Just came up a little short, perfect storm. Central, fantastic. Miller early on, collective effort. Lavelle Bowen, very pleased, very excited with this ball club and their performance, Stephanie. My goodness, they came out hyping hot. <laughs> I mean, we saw players who shoot below 30% from behind the arc knocking it down like dead-eye shooters. North Carolina Central University Eagles come away with the victory in the very first game of the Invesco QQQ Legacy Classic. First of a doubleheader and first ever for this event because I anticipate this will happen again next year. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, for our guest analyst, J.R. Smith and Grant Hill, I'm Stephanie Reddy. Don't forget 
We'll be back for game two. And next, we've got our dunk contest. Stay tuned for the Bleacher Report Slam Dunk Contest presented by HBO Max. North Carolina Central University wins the first game of the day over Delaware State University. Stay tuned for more action.